Alright, uh, hello ladies and gentlemen, I just got done uh, recording the Rocket League video, so if you'll give me a second. Alright, I don't want to waste any time here. If you're uh, defending Sweet Baby, you're on the wrong side of this one. The fact that a company like that even exists in today's, uh, in today's gaming economy is just offensive as it is. But mainly what I'm here to rant about today is uh, the recent exposure as a cons consultant that tries to force uh, diversity quotas and get people to blackmail their marketing team into making an objectively worse game than they otherwise could have in the name of uh, inclusion. Or, sorry, INCLUSION! In short, Game Your Gate 2. Just as a side note, I did write this one down because uh, when it comes to these uh, more talkative episodes, more opinionated episodes, I like to have it written down as to what I'm gonna say, how I'm gonna say it. Because I don't, I don't want to just like, just go rambling on about whatever. So if you see me looking down here, that's because I have a script written up that I wrote and it, it just has my ideas condensed into it. So let's play some Lego Fortnite while we talk. I think, I think that would be, I think that would be fine. All right, uh, while we're here, while we're here loading in, uh, I do want to let you know there's some guys doing work outside of my house, so uh, it's not going to be <laughs> totally quiet. But uh, yeah, uh, welcome to my little LEGO Fortnite world. I've been trying to get a village in the Frostlands for a while, so uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, what we're here to talk about today is the supposed Gamergate, Gamergate uh, 2. English is hard, I'm sorry. Uh, as far as my personal experience goes with this, the most recent time, actually I think the only time I've uh, encountered Sweet Baby's work. Sweet Baby, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna act like that didn't happen. The only, I think the only time that I've encountered Sweet Baby's work is, uh, is with Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. Uh, their involvement isn't necessarily the important part here. Um, well, we'll touch on that later. The game overall, Spider-Man 2, uh, actually, it's a B-grade game in my opinion. Uh, it's held back by nerfing uh, Peter Parker into the ground. Miles is bland and boring. He has no exaggerated swagger whatsoever. Ask this specific side coming, quest uh, stopping me from getting 100% completion because um, I refuse to be complacent in other people's sins. More boring MJ sections in a game titled Frickin' Spider Man. The force stepping down of, uh, of Peter at the end of the game and he leaves Miles alone as the. As the Spider-Man in New York, uh, it was actually officially confirmed that he is now the main Spider-Man in the Insomniac's universe. And uh, and and lastly, I guess uh, Miles is uh, sponsored by Nike Fashion Taste. I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I think <laughs> I think that suit he makes at the end of the game looks goofy as all hell. I immediately took it off and put on the uh, I think I think it's a 2099 suit that he has the the one with the with the like foggy glowing eyes and a cape, not a cape, a hood. I'm remembering this. Maybe I should play Spider-Man 2 again. Actually, in, uh, in case it wasn't obvious, I don't, I don't, I don't like Spider-Man 2. Uh, I bought it, I played it, figured out I didn't like it, uh, rushed through it to just finish the story and see where that ends up, and then I immediately put it back on my shelf. I did not, I did not enjoy my time uh, with the with the narrative part of it. Uh, the gameplay itself, I guess, is fine. It's just the the MJ parts that I really didn't like. But it wasn't it wasn't the same for the original Spider-Man on uh, PC and PS4 though. I love and still love that uh that original game. Die, die, please. Fish stick, you're doing you're doing nothing. You're doing three. Kill him. Kill him. Yay. Oh, but the the original uh and remastered version of Marvel Spider-Man is exactly what I expect from a PS4 uh, video game. You know. The DLC is absolutely worth it, uh, just for the for the story expansion alone. Uh, Peter's at the top of his game, uh, visibly. You know, you you feel it as the as the player. Uh, you you feel how powerful this guy is. And I I actually don't mind the light use of MJ in the original Marvel's uh, Spider-Man uh, because it, it made sense to me as a player uh, back then, and you know it still makes sense to me now. Uh, so I can. I can't go and say that I absolutely hated every part of that, uh, every part of that part of the game, like some others do. But uh, I'm, I'm a little more understanding in, in, in that aspect. I, I, I get why the, uh, the, the writers of Spider-Man One uh, wanted us to use MJ uh, for a couple of parts. Take for example uh, this part of the game where MJ is caught up in a hostage situation. I can't speak English. I'm sorry. MJ is caught up in a hostage situation, and uh, she is tasked with finding Peter a way in because he's not he's not there he's not anywhere close uh, she has to find him a way in she has to I, I say she but we as the player uh, we we have to get him a way in uh, we have to have him uh, take out some guards uh, so we don't get caught because again we're playing as MJ we're not playing as spider-man where 
like, what, 30 bullets is enough to kill us, but with Spider-Man he can tank a bunch of them and still be perfectly fine. So it adds a little bit of suspense to it, and you have to do all of this in stealth mode. Um, the game eventually gives you back uh, control of, uh, of Spider-Man, and you can go and do what Spider-Man does. But the th this is what I could this is what I'd consider tasteful uh, switching of the of the player character, where you you, you go from super overpowered Spider Boy to unsuper normal adult female that doesn't even have a weapon at this point besides her hands. Um, in my opinion, that's 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 an all right use of it. Uh, it. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't make Peter look like an idiot because if you have a hostage situation and you have a bomb in there, obviously you're going to want to be a lot more careful. And I think you would have had to have played that part of the game as stealth. So I'm trying not to die to fall damage again. I'm start. I'm, I'm feeling myself getting a little off topic. Let me take. <laughs> let me take a look back at my little my little scripting. Uh, but uh, the the problem with Spider-Man 2, I guess, is that they they brought back these MJ sections. They they brought them back, but in a way that feels uh, downright insulting sometimes. I, I have written here that I'll some details about the last mission of the game, um, la last MJ mission, not the last mission. I gotta I gotta clarify that before anyone starts calling me fake. Uh, so it's it's supposed to be the pinnacle of MJ gameplay, the uh, the last MJ mission of Spider-Man 2. You know, at this point of the game. Uh, the gang have decided that they need to steal a meteorite shard from Venom uh, to win, I guess. And so Peter goes to distract Venom. They they, they find where it is first. Uh, Peter goes to distract Venom, so you know that's fair enough. Venom's a big a big strong guy. Peter's got his hands full with just Venom. Uh, Miles goes to distract a bunch of the Venom goons that are around the little entrance to the cave where this meteorite shard is. Uh, and then MJ is the one that goes in for the goes in for the kill, I guess. Where she she's the one that goes in to grab the meteorite. At this point in the game, the player could have walked through hundreds of the little venom goon things. I, I don't know what they're actually called, uh, but the, the point is we we would have we would have beat up hundreds of these guys without without it being hard whatsoever. And I know that because I did. I, um, I'm one of those players that, uh, when you give me a, a big open world story driven game, I'll, I'll intentionally try to finish as much of the side quests and side content, uh, before progressing the story. Um, no, I just ran into a wall. And, and so because of that, I had already gone through like all of the Venom camps throughout the overworld and, and cleared them. What the hell is this guy doing? I had already gone through all of the Venom camps in the overworld and I'd already cleared all of them. So absolutely none of them. <laughs> None of it, none of it made sense to me in, in the in the final mission. No, I didn't understand as to why the hell they wanted MJ to be the one to grab the meteorite when Miles was literally right there. They could have just had Miles go in and grab the meteorite instead. You would have avoided having to put all these uh, conveniently placed uh, barrels all around the all, all around the final level, where if you shoot him, they'll. Uh, I think it straight up kills them, but I'm not and I'm not entirely sure. It's, it, it has been a while since uh, since the game came out. I don't think MJ had to be there. She could have been doing something else the entire time. If anything, she could have been doing some sort of like defense or extraction sort of mission, with trying to get people either to safety or getting people out of the city. Uh, and, and you could have still had your girl boss moments with that. She's just a normal person. She's just a normal New Yorker uh, that happens to have a gun. So, she's a regular American in New York. I, I think it would have been better if they just had her do something else. You know, I don't, I don't hate women. I don't want her to not be involved. But like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me as to why they involve her that way and not any other way. And it, it's, it, it's, it's fine, I guess, uh, the way it turns out. But you know, it, it's, it's, it's a, pro it's a problem nonetheless. Now, why you might ask? Well, because, um, because nobody liked it in the first game. No, nobody, nobody liked the MJ missions, <laughs> or at least, uh, or at least broadly, nobody liked them. And this just feels like they, they did it again for the sake of doing it again. Uh, not really to improve upon the last MJ missions, not, not really to, uh, you know, show us something different through her eyes. It's just more, it's just more the same in my opinion. Um, underwhelming content that should have been side content at best. And gener generally, I don't think that the MJ missions in Spider-Man 2 make the game itself any better. You know, when you start adding features to a game, uh, what's the point of it? You want to make the game better, at least. I'd assume from like the five or six months that I spent uh, messing around with Unity and Unreal, where I, I, actually, I actually did want to make my own video games for a while, that's that's what I'd add new features for to, to make the game better. But in this case, the MJ parts of Spider-Man 2 don't make the game better. Uh, so I'm a little confused as to why they're there. You know, her first mission could have been completed as Miles. It would have led to a nice bro moment between him and Peter when, uh, when Pete gets stabbed and then dies and then comes back to life and does the whole sequence. 
with uh, with the Venom symbiote. You know, her second mission, in my opinion, would have been really cool if we played as Peter inside of Peter's mind and like the symbiote was slowly taking over. All while you, you can hear in the background like the muffled yells of people that are seeing this guy rampaging around the streets. That would have been a nice uh, spectacle to see. I guess. I guess you could call it a spectacle. The, the way that it was executed in the actual game, uh, all it ended with is Miles getting captured and not a whole lot of progress happening on Peter's side. As far as character development goes, uh, in my, at least as far as I remember. The fact that I can't remember it doing anything for him uh, really really tells you what you need to know. And I, I already I already ranted a little bit about how I think her her last mission, her third mission, could have could have just been Miles. Not to mention that he already has he already has pretty unfair abilities when compared to Peter. He can already go invisible so that would have been incredibly beneficial for a mission like uh, like that last one where you have to sneak in and steal a meteorite instead of just busting in with a gun and shooting everybody which isn't really what I expect from a spider-man game period uh, now you, you might be asking yourself I've spent however long uh, ranting about why I don't like MJ's involvement in spider-man 2 and you might be asking that's great but uh, what the hell does this have to do with uh, with gamergate uh, in short uh, I think Sweet Baby's involvement in all of this is uh, basically irrelevant. There, there, yeah, there I said it. All they are, at least from what I know, is an echo chamber for people who already want to sacrifice the quality of their game in the name of uh, diversity and inclusion. So, you know, you know I, get, I get Miles existing. Uh, I'm, I'm not racist or, or anything. I, I don't understand MJ's involvement in this. If, uh, if if Sweet Baby's involvement as a narrative consultant can explain away why MJ's in the, is still in the game as a playable character in no and no better of a way than she was the last time, then yeah, no, I totally blame them for it. Um, but you know, we, we don't know. They do admit themselves that they don't they don't make the final choices here, and that that they they, they still leave it up to the to the actual developers, but they also do mention that they encourage uh, their clients to blackmail their marketing team and make make them think that the game's going to do worse if they don't add all these uh, little little nitpick details. Which yeah is pretty scummy in its own right, but they they all the the people who hire Sweet Baby to do consulting for their game they they already want to sacrifice the quality of their game. They already don't want to make the best game possible. They want to make the most politically accurate game possible. On its own, making a political game and making a political statement behind it is, you know, perfectly acceptable, I guess. Art has art has many forms uh, and many purposes, but Gamergate 2 specifically, at least uh, at least from what everyone's calling it, um, it's it's just a reaction to people noticing all of this. Gamer Gamergate itself is a reaction to uh, to people noticing that hey, wait a minute, these games aren't as good as they could be. But why did they also have the money to go and hire someone to consult on their story? And that consultant never once told them that they're just that that game just sucked. Yeah, but no, the reaction to Sweet Baby uh, specifically is just another data point showing how deep this infection runs. The gaming industry, in my opinion, has become too mainstream, and it has to keep bowing to the current thing in order to appease its uh, appease its stockholders. There's nothing wrong with being mainstream in itself, but uh, when you start, I guess, obsessing over the fact that you are, your your art, your product uh, starts to take a hit. Nobody liked the uh, the MJ sections in the last game. I think, I think I'm one of the few that actually appreciated them, but generally, uh, they, they got a pretty poor, poor reception uh, in the original Marvel Spider-Man. And you know, these, these big game studios, they can't just advertise their political leanings on the, on the cover art and all the, on the advertising material. They have to sort of sneak it in, I guess. And that, that too is, um, try, trying to trick somebody into buying your product and then giving them something that they don't want, uh, is, is pretty scummy in my opinion. Try not to, uh, please let me know if I'm, if I'm like that, if I'm ever like that when, uh, when making these, uh, these videos that I'm currently making. Uh, I don't want to be like that, so if, yeah, if people could tell me, then I could stop being a douchebag. Tell people to go harass you, they'll get your accounts banned, they'll generally just harass you and bully you if you notice, and you tell people that you notice. And that's already more scummy, so I start to think that there's some kind of evil intent behind this. You you, you can't just have like a regular remaster of Spider-Man on the PC. They, they need to put uh, pride flags in New York where they don't belong. You, you can't just have a normal... Alan Wake 2, they need to race swap a character that was already pretty well established as being white. You can't just have the biggest, baddest RPG of all time. You need to include support for mentally ill people who should probably go to therapy and not play video games. It, it's, uh, they'll, they'll lure you in with the promise of a nice warm chocolate chip cookie and then, <laughs> and then you'll take a first bite and there's fucking raisins in there. These days when I see studios going under and new games but getting, uh, getting bad review after bad review, um, it's gone to the point where I, 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 I start to want the modern gaming uh, 
industry to uh, to, to die. I, I want them to die. Uh, I don't I don't want to make I don't want to keep it a secret or, or anything. No, I want the modern uh, game industry to crash, burn. I want them to, to stop working because you know at this point they're just making a product for the sake of releasing a product. Uh, we see this a little more drastically with stuff like uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three Part Two, I guess. I guess you could call it where it, it's it's not it's not a good game in the slightest, but they still release that thing. Somebody still greenlit it, and it's it, it's it's a gross video game. It's literally just uh, last year's Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare Two Part Two. Like I, that's already lazy as it is. Why? Why? Uh, uh, where was I? I I forgot. Maybe I shouldn't be playing games while I'm doing this. No, but yeah, no, at this point, I, I want most uh, Western game companies, I, I fully want them to die. Like, I, 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 can't, I can't have that be a secret uh, for, for exactly a long time. Eventually, it would have come out. Um, you know, I think, I think their priorities are pretty disordered, honestly. Uh, where they, they think we've regressed somehow to a point where we need to be talked to like little babies. Say what you will about being family friendly, like when when the point is that not everybody is a family and not every everybody wants to be um you know talked to like they're some sort of child, I guess. And you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a big deal if this was like a one-time thing, if this didn't happen super often. Uh but no, it is happening pretty often and it's oh, it's, it's it's really it's really discouraging as somebody who genuinely loves the video game industry and loves the the idea of interactive media um watching these companies shift their priorities from making the best possible product i, sh I really should have cut a product for making the best possible experience to just making an experience for the sake of making an experience and you know you, if you do want to have like political video games and that's fine it's, there's a there's a place for that and it's called not mine but when i go and when i go and buy uh by a game, I'm not thinking. Oh, what kind of what kind of secret messaging are they gonna have in here? Uh, are they gonna are they gonna show seals dying and blame it on Donald Trump? Are they gonna are, are they gonna show a bunch of a bunch of Mexicans jumping a wall and blame it on drugs or whatever? I'm not thinking about that. I'm, I I see a game called Spider Man Two and I think, oh, cool Spider Man! I, I want to play as that guy. I want to be that guy. But uh, there is one one tiny ray of hope though, and and of all the games to do it. It's, uh, it's, it's Helldivers 2. So at the, at the time of writing, uh, Jesus, that tree's in my way, but I, I don't want to get rid of it because it looks nice. I like the aesthetic. But yeah, at the time of writing, uh, of all the games, to, to start making a genuine attempt to remain politically neutral, uh, Helldivers 2, of all, of all video games, the one that's obviously, um, slander against the, uh, the authoritarian, uh, right? I <laughs> kill you. <laughs> You know, I can laugh at it, even though I am generally on the right on the right side of things. Um, I laugh at it because it's funny, and I, I know I know humor when I see it. But yeah, of, of all the games to do it, it's fucking Hell Divers too. Uh, I've been I've been seeing uh, it's been brought to my attention by the the uh, the great YouTube algorithm that they are banning, <coughs> not banning. Oh, geez, my throat's getting dry. Hold on, let me let me take a sip of water. No, don't do that. Oh my, those who ask for LGBT. Uh, stuff in <clears throat> in Helldivers 2 are getting their their comments locked on uh, on Steam, and if you don't know what that means, uh, that means that no they they can't edit it, they can't uh, nobody can comment on it. Uh, at, at least from 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 my understanding, that's uh, that's what it means. So yeah, in my opinion, it's a good thing because uh, the less the less support of mental illness, the better. And you know, I might think of that as a win, but uh, either way. <laughs> Even the people who are specifically asking for no LGTV uh, stuff are getting their, their comments locked also. And uh, I guess the, the explanation, um, I, haven't, I haven't seen the, the official explanation anywhere, so I might throw it up on screen if I can find it. But uh, the, the explanation, from what I understand, is that they are, they are really trying to make a, a commitment to keep uh, these sort of political things outside of their video games. You know, you can have in-universe uh, politics where... Uh, you know, it's the bugs versus the communist robots versus the freedom-loving Helldivers. And, you know, those in-universe politics are fine. But they don't want any, any real-world, uh, politics, I guess. Uh, alright, uh, those of you who are actually into LEGO Fortnite, uh, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna keep this as an entirely, cl uh, as an entirely closed-in room. I can't speak either. No, I, uh, I, I, I build it like this first, and then I, I go in and break walls and add windows where, where I think it'll look nice. But yeah, I got I gotta get to finishing this video. I'm sorry, fellas.
uh, to finish off my statement on this, uh, I generally don't support people lashing out at those who aren't responsible for their grievances. Uh, and the same still stands here. Uh, I don't think that changes at all for, for uh, the situation. It's, it's not Sweet Baby specifically that's the source of our problems here. It's the, it's the developer's fault, uh, in my opinion. After all, they decided to hire Sweet Baby for uh, diversity consulting rather than spend that precious time and money on making... Uh, you know, as perfect of a video game as you can make. You know, obviously you're never going to make the perfect video game, but generally just aspiring for perfection will, will stop you from settling into mediocrity, at least at least from my experience with uh, with some of the jobs that I've held. And, uh, and, and those people, you know, they absolutely deserve all the hate that gamers have. Ad admittedly, all the hate that the gamers have um, might only consist of uh, bad Steam reviews and slightly lower sales. Sometimes it can result in catastrophic failures. I, for one, personally, uh, can't do much about it because I, I already don't buy a lot of uh, western made video games I'll pre-order things like a new Mario game like the second it's it's announced but with something like uh, like Sea of Thieves or the new God of War God of War Ragnarok uh, I'll, I'll make a serious attempt to pick it up after everyone else has gotten a chance to come through and see if it's uh, some sort of secret political messaging agenda or if it's just a good video game. Generally, I don't like buying uh, political propaganda after all. I like buying video games and also $50 empty boxes. Just regular collector activities here.